We have faces, we have names. This is so, so exciting. Trying to keep my cool though. Well made. There's no engine or radar on that. Not that one. I'm so glad I got from my kids who are 14 and 17 and my 14 year olds like you slap your friends on the back way too often <laughs> way too often I've told you that before <laughs> okay if you guys have questions you can raise your hand and I'll call on you and Rebecca go uh, are you excited I'm kidding I'm kidding <laughs> So I know you talked about, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things to do before you actually launch. What do you think will be the biggest challenge from here until launch day? Managing the uncertainty. Okay. Absolutely. You know, things are fluid. There's a lot of development work still to happen, software specifically. Uh, we're still thinking about that heat shield and that, analyzing the Artemis 1 heat shield. And so that's going to have a potential impact on launch dates and when we do things. And so I think the biggest one will be the uncertainty. That's just my opinion. Uh, I, you know, you're the closest one that's flown a, a spacecraft in kind of a test configuration with Crew One, uh, Victor. So I think we look to you a lot for that uncertain, uncertainty. Um, for the rest of us, that by far that will be our biggest challenge, um, getting through this. We also, I think, a big challenge for us will be to always keep our focus that this is not Artemis Two. This is Artemis, and we are landing people on the moon. We're going to Gateway. We are going over to Mars. And so just to never let ourselves take that step down, to always stay up there and remember, this is about Artemis, this is about all of us, and every crew that's going to ride these vehicles. Okay. So I have a question. So my son is an aspiring astronaut. That's like his dream in the world. What advice would you have for him to help him to reach his goal? Yeah, so I'll share. Um, you know, what I always tell uh, young, our young people is, that, you know, kind of three things. Academics, they matter. Uh, you don't have to be the best, but you got to do your best. And everybody can do their best and give it a good shot. Uh, and then you need what I call operational skills, which means like you need to challenge yourself. You need to have a diversity in the experiences that you take in throughout your life. So that could be camping or it could be a youth program, but you need to challenge yourself. You can't do this from the couch. And then the third thing is <laughs> Dang it. Uh, teamwork. You know, no one wants to be trapped in a small Orion capsule for 10 days with someone who doesn't have empathy, isn't going to look out for the team, isn't going to take care of one another. you got to be a good team player, and this world can be a harsh place, and you got to be the type of person that looks out and lifts other people up. What is one thing your younger, you, you wish you knew when you were younger that you wish you knew? Oh. I've got one for that. It goes back to um, what Jeremy was just saying about teamwork. I was actually relentlessly, fearlessly, or fiercely independent um, when I was younger. And I didn't discover teamwork until pretty late in my career. I always worked on team stuff in school and everything, but the true love of it as an introvert didn't come for me until later. And once I discovered it, the world just like re-emerged as this place of possibilities. And that's what I would tell my younger self. Just go after it. You don't have to do everything solo. Um, teamwork is where it's at. 
Um, Jeremy, one for you. How does it feel to be the first Canadian who is going around the moon? Like, I know there's a lot of emotions involved, but if you had to sum it up, what would you say? Yeah, I like seeing what's on your arm there. That's <laughs> cool. I love seeing that flag. Um, you know, for me, it is, it's hope, really, for the world. Like, I, I look around and I'm not satisfied with the way things are. Um, I think the world can do better. And the only way to do that is to work together. You have to have a global mindset. These We have global challenges facing our next generation. It's going to take global solutions. And so what I love about not me being the first Canadian, but about a Canadian being part of this is it's a like, perfect symbol of, hey, world, we have to work together. we got to stop dividing. we got to come together. That's what I'm excited about. And you saw it today. Like, it was, I was super proud today to just see that collaboration highlighted. You just can't mistake it when you see a crew, an international crew. Can we also get Minister Champagne to come over and have <laughs> <laughs> First of all, can I say, go Navy. Woo! <laughs> 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 Congratulations. How is this different from flying an F-18? <laughs> I'll take that one. Yes! <laughs> yes. You see brown boots, though. We'll <laughs> uh, this is, uh, to, to us, this is completely different because this is the, the main difference is uh, you fly an F-18 every day, and it's really challenging. It's high risk. Uh, you get amped up for that every day. This is, this is going to be years of training for a 10-day flight, and we're going to come back, and then this will be a badge that we'll wear proudly for the rest of our lives. Um, so it's, it's, it feels the same way. You, you leave your family, you come back. There's a lot of those same cadences as, as being in the military, but this, to, to me, it's just completely, completely different. It's all prep, and then the action is intense. What do you represent? <laughs> what did you do? Any of you have an educator um, who inspired you to pursue your field in school? I, I, I just wanted, I wanted to dive on this. I should not have said anything, but uh, my, I think she's 78 years old. She was my history teacher in high school, and I just reached out to her last week for something and asked her for a picture, uh, Joyce Lamer, and uh, she scanned one in and sent it over email, and I got to see her and her husband. She looked exactly as she did. And I was sitting in her homeroom, and uh, just a, a personal story, I did really bad on this one test, and she, I knew I was a good student. Instead of giving me a grade, she just put a frowny face on me. <laughs> and I will never forget it. Like, that's all she needed to say. I had so much respect for her that I was like, I cannot let this lady down. And I still, I think about her all the time. So I'm um, an elementary educator and I work with teachers. And um, a lot of them, like, are struggling with the importance of, like, STEM education. So if you could say anything to teachers about the importance of STEM and, like, what that meant for you as, as a kid. I can take this one. I think for me as a kid, the fact that STEM was a huge part of our educational system meant that I found a place to flourish. I absolutely loved math and science. I loved the, the precision of it. I loved being good at it. I loved that you could do discovery with it. I loved that it represented both a theoretical and a hands-on. And without that, I wouldn't have flourished in school. And I think the cool thing about the space program is that, yes, it shows that you can do awesome things with STEM, but it's not just space that's awesome with STEM. It's any innovation. It's anything that you can do to make the world a better place because you look at something and you know how the world works and you're not afraid to be inventive and put all that to bear. Um, so STEM to me is just really like at the heart of innovation, which is what we do. Um, so, how have your experiences with the Orion spacecraft? <laughs> <laughs> we just got a sign! <laughs> We've been working on it for a very long time, you know, since back when it was called the multi-purpose crew vehicle. And back in the Constellation program, which started around the, you know, 2003 time frame. So we've been developing this system for quite a while. You know, we flew EFT-1, uh, and then the Artemis-1, we had abort, uh, asked an abort test. There's been a lot of work on, on Artemis and uh, on, on Orion, and we've had the opportunity to work on display software procedures, uh, but mostly working with the team of folks that's, that's going to fly these missions, flight directors, flight controllers, and all the system and subsystem engineers. And so um, it's, it's been great to call that we can get the time to get and do things like we did a vibration on a big vibrating table to make sure you could read the displays while the thing was shaking to simulate those solid rocket boosters. And so we've done a little bit of work in different capacities, uh, but it's nice to see it all coming together and we look forward. We're gonna, one of our primary roles in the near future will be to continue those, those tests. Oh, space buns. 
how did you find out you were going to be part of the crew? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, uh, we goofed a little bit. <laughs> so we all had uh, random meetings put on our calendar. The NASA folks, at least, Jeremy's story is, uh, will be slightly different, but we had random meetings put on our calendars at the same time so that we would all arrive to our, our astronaut quarantine facility. And for one reason or another, I, I know, I was, just, I was late. I showed up. <laughs> and I felt terrible. Hey, at least you were there. <laughs> I didn't even make it. <laughs> I thought it was a virtual meeting, so I signed on from a whole different part of campus and realized there was no Teams link and immediately texted him and said, oh, can we just do this virtually? And our boss was like, no. <laughs> and when I showed up and saw these guys, as well as the head of flight operations uh, director, and I realized why I needed to be there in person. All right, so you know now you're getting the brutal truth. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Armstrong famously said one giant step, etc. Have you, any, all of you, thought about what you're going to say or think at that point? <laughs> well, I am relieved that I won't have to say anything related to this. <laughs> because, no, I have no idea what I would say. I have a lot of sentiments, um, but boiling it down into one sentence is something that really made him a hero. And, I'm impressed. Well, you have some time. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, did you hear what happened in that hangar? That's, that, that took a lot of work. I don't want to think about a speech for a long time. <laughs> All right. I think that is... Oh, I feel the same way. Um, you know, I, I think for us, and I just don't anticipate having to have, like, that one moment. I think we have two years to convey the important message, like I was saying earlier. And, and we're just going to tell the truth. You know, that's how we get all this through these uh, these endless PR opportunities. Is, uh, we just tell the truth, and we have an amazing story to tell. It's beautiful, beautiful story, beautiful story of collaboration, and uh, I will never get tired of telling it. One more okay. question. Okay, Rosie and Zena. What opportunities or experiences changed your perspective and gave you courage to apply to become an astronaut? Maybe misplaced ego at the time. <laughs> I don't know. I'll share one. I, I don't remember when it happened. I think it was in um, university time frame for me at the military academy. But I, I do remember like a moment. You know, there's these moments in your life when your brain figures something out, and I figured this out, and it was pretty big for me. It was the moment I realized that we were all the same, and that there are a bunch of fakers out there who are trying to tell you they're better than you. Uh, and I believed it for a lot, you know, that's a big part of my life, you know, like 20 years of my life, I believed that, that there were these people that were just better. And, and I remember that switch, and was like, oh, they're, they're trying to be something more than what they really are. The reality is we're all the same. And we all have these, you know, we all have our gifts and our talents, but we really are bring equal value to this world, and all the contributions are, are important and meaningful. That was a big shift for me. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Man, that's great. Okay, I think we're going to take a group photo, so if you guys want to scoot your chairs up a little bit, we'll just file in behind. So you guys oh, so cute. Wow. Hey, while you're shuffling in here, I just want to say one more thing. You are all part of our team. Like, we, we are, we're obviously, you can tell it's important to us to share this message, and four of us cannot do it alone. And that is why you're in this room today. That's why we're setting aside special time to be with you, because you are important for us to convey this message. So all of us, thank you.